All right, welcome back with me. I have Jay Lehu with Dallas Pets Alive. She is talking about pet fostering today. So if you have been thinking about bringing a little cuddly, wuddly little animal into your home, you can be the perfect foster parent, and we're going to tell you how. So Jay, tell us how, uh, who, first of all, who is fit to be a foster, and what are our steps to prepare us to be a foster gay parent? Let's see. Um, if you love animals and you can provide yeah. them with shelter as far as a roof over their head mm -hmm. and you can provide them okay. with food and water and absolute unconditional Check. love unconditional love mm -hmm. then uh you're probably fit to be uh, a sign me up <laughs> um you don't want to be a foster just to be able to say you rescued an animal. I mean, a lot of, so many people have right. a really good heart and they want to do this, but they work 18 hours a day away from the house and the animal is alone. So you have, you have to make sure that you're going to have time to devote to that animal. Uh, you know, you have to take the time to walk the dog, spend time with the dog or cat, if, you know, should you decide to do that. But dogs especially are a little bit more maintenance than cats. Um, but, uh, you know, you don't want to keep a dog in the kennel all day long and then come home, let it right. out and go to bed. So um, what's really neat about our particular rescue group is that as we've grown, we have uh, partnered with a lot of different um, companies that have donated food and crates and leashes and collars and medications and heartworm preventative just so that new fosters if they're worried about, oh my gosh, I have to like go into the pet store if I foster my first animal and I have to buy all this stuff to get ready. No, right. you don't. The unexpected vet you. bill cost. Exactly. I mean, we can we can help you with all that. Also, um, with the majority of rescues, when you're fostering an animal, the vet bills are covered. Like no matter what, you do not have to pay out of pocket for a vet bill. That is that is covered because it, they are five hundred one uh, 3C organizations, they're nonprofits. And so that those vet bills are covered. You don't pay out of pocket and then you're reimbursed. They are literally just covered. That, that, that in itself is, um, a, a reason why I think a lot of people don't get into pet ownership or pet fostering is because they're worried about the unexpected costs that come with the unexpected vet bills, especially if there is a handicapped pet or a, a pet that needs special needs, but a lot of the fostering groups and the rescue groups help cover those costs. And what's great is usually before we even pull an animal from the shelter, we get those medical records. They a vet has seen them, so we kind of know what we're working with before we get them. Whether they right. have heartworms and they're going to need heartworm treatment, if they have been hit by a car and they they're going to need surgery or an amputation, mm -hmm. or if it's just an upper respiratory infection, or if they're just fine, you know, um, we 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 know that in advance. Most fosters are not going to you know, pick a dog to foster. And then all of a sudden we show up at their door and say, by the way, did we not tell you that um, this dog is blind and deaf and needs surgery and blah, blah, you know, so, and you won't. Yeah. You're not, <laughs> yeah, you're going to know going, yeah, you're going to know going into it. And a lot of foster programs are going to make sure that you bond well with the animal before you ever take it into custody, I guess, uh, or under care, because they want to make sure that you, you know, can play well with the animal, right? I mean, that's a part of the fostering it's process. It's not even really so much of bonding, but you want to make sure that you know as much about the dog as possible. Um, like if you are not comfortable being around large dogs to begin with, you're probably not going to want to foster, go and say, I'll take that hundred pound um, Great Dane over there. You know, you're probably not going to want right. to do that. They're not going to encourage you to do that. They're going to find out, you know, do you live in an apartment or a house? Okay. Well, if you live in an apartment, then you probably don't want a one-year-old um, Labrador retriever that's going to be doing zoomies right. in the living room, you know? So we kind of, <laughs> we get your information and we, we help you find a suitable, um, animal in the shelter that is going to be comfortable for your lifestyle and is not going to add stress to, you know, to your life. And that will make your transition into fostering easy. And that's what I was going to say. I mean, people don't have to just, they can adopt 
puppies. I mean, that is a, you, you are oh, foster yeah. puppies. You can, you can foster puppies. You can foster old age dogs. You can foster pretty much any age group uh, with any kind of health issues or, or non-health issues, I guess. Right. We have litters of puppies right now. Spring is puppy and kitten season. Mm -hmm. And the shelters are like overrun with people, good Samaritans bringing in abandoned litters of puppies and kittens or pregnant dogs and cats come in and they have the babies. And once they're weaned, but they're not big enough for adoption, we have fosters that are like, give me those eight puppies. I'll take them in, and, you know, and then right. they get them ready until they're big enough to be spayed and neutered and they, they adopt them out. So yeah, you can foster puppies. And then also they're singlets too. I mean, you don't have to take in a litter, but yeah, you can absolutely. And then we have seniors. Um, I fostered and then foster failed a senior dog that was um, taken to the shelter and the owner requested euthanasia because she was too old. Um, we had Nika, Aww. she was, she was 14 years old and she was an amazing, amazing dog. And I, and she was wonderful. And we had her for a year and a half before she passed away. And we just, we treated yeah. her like a queen. We all want to be treated like Queens. That's for sure. <laughs> and yeah. so, you know, it's, it, it's important that we, you know, we provide a great space for these foster pets at our own house. Just, and we have 30 seconds before we have to go to another short one minute break, but in 30 seconds, can you tell me? Um, what are some quick steps to prep your home for a new foster or foster pet? What you want to do is make sure that um, if you're going to bring in a young dog or a dog period, you want to make sure that you have things that are on your floor that you don't want chewed up just in case up and in cabinets, things like that. Uh, you want to make sure that um, you have any uh, plants or toxic chemicals that might be laying around, you know, like just bottles of things, mm -hmm. you know, just make sure you, you basically like you would baby proof it. If you had like a young right. nephew coming over, you want to do the same thing because dogs and puppies are curious and so are cats. And so that's, that's what you want to do. You want to baby proof your house and um, you know, and, and then maybe and just keep them on the uh, on the non carpeted areas <laughs> until you yeah. get to know their if they're or potty trained or how they do in the house or get puppy yeah. pets yeah until you get them into a routine of taking them out because house training a dog is not as hard as people say it is it's really quite easy. Well, I, I hear you say that we still have issues with our old ass English bulldogs, but well, that's that's a that's for a different show. Anyway, hey, I know we have to go to a quick one minute break, but we'll be right back with Jay Lehue of Dallas Pets Alive. And we're going to talk more about pet fostering. We're going to talk about other rescue groups. We're going to talk about exotic animal fostering, uh, all of Jay's current pets, and then a way to get in contact with Jay when we come back uh, with Jay Lehue with Dallas Pets Alive on the Out of the Closet podcast. Woo! Hi there, I'm Maylin Luke, owner of RustingPlantFace.com. I create hand-poured and hand-painted concrete planters and unique home goods in a variety of styles, colors, and also do custom orders. Just visit RustingPlantFace.com and use code OOTC to get free shipping on your order. Visit me on Instagram at RustingPlantFace for plant tips and tricks. Plant parents and aspiring plant parents are welcome. Hello to all my Out of the Closet podcast family. I don't want to beg and I don't want to come off as needy, but the Out of the Closet podcast only exists because of listeners like you, and I really need your support. Any financial support you can do would be amazing and greatly appreciated, whether it's $5, an ongoing monthly contribution, or if you just want to hand over your total inheritance and put me in the will, that's fine too. Anyway, it's really easy to do. Just go to outofthecloset.podcast.com and click the support tab. Thank you so much for supporting the Out of the Closet podcast. 